Hey everyone, this is Brian Gardner, Principal Developer Advocate at WP Engine. And in today's video, we're gonna walk through how to design a link page pattern with the Frost WordPress theme. Link pages are great because they serve as a link tree alternative, could be hosted on your own website, and it gives people a place to share everything they create and all the things they love in one place. Let's get started. Okay, so what we're looking at here is a link page that is done with Frost WordPress theme. This is a pattern that's created. It's easily insertable with uh, one click via the block editor. Uh, but I'm gonna walk you through each section here and then we'll go through and learn how to build it. So we're looking at, again, the link page and at the top we have just an image block which you can uh, customize. You have a name, which is a heading in this case. You've got your email address, paragraph, uh, and then you've got some social icons here. And then below that, we've got some buttons. And then there's a little uh, made with frost, uh, made out of a paragraph block. And so I'm gonna go into just the back end really quickly to show list view, just so we can see what we're looking at here. Um, and then we'll go through and build it. So like I said, we have the image, we have the name, the paragraph, social icons, buttons, and paragraph. So I'm gonna go in and create a new page. And we're gonna call this link page. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna assign a template here on the right-hand side. You can see there's a drop-down menu. Frost comes with a couple of extra page templates. Uh, one of them is called blank, which means nothing loads other than the content on the page. It does not have a header, it does not have a footer, uh, because in this case, we don't wanna do that. And so I'm gonna select the blank template here, and then this will uh, serve as the template for the page. I'm gonna publish this just so we have it handy. And I'm gonna just go through and systematically build out uh, the parts of the page and then we'll go through and style them. So the first thing we had was an image. Uh, so I'm gonna go through here. I've already got mine uploaded and you'll see this comes in very large. Um, I'm gonna go through and actually style this. So I've set this at 120 pixels by 120 pixels. So we'll just uh, do that really quickly. And then we'll style the rest of it later. I just did that to get it out of our way. Uh, then we've got name and then email address. And so uh, we'll do a heading block because that's what we use for the name. I'll do my name, hit enter. And then I'm going to do brian at briangardner.com. Uh, and then below the email address, we've got some social icons and I'll go through and we'll enter social icons. I think we'll have Twitter and give it a fake link, whoops. We'll add Instagram. LinkedIn, these are generally the five social media icons I put on my page. Uh, we will do Facebook. And then we've got uh, Dribble as a designer. I'm a fan of Dribbble. Okay, so underneath the five social icons here, we've got some links here. And so uh, actually these are buttons. So we'll just go down here. We'll add the buttons block. And the first one I believe said, visit my website. We'll hit enter, read my blog down Load my ebook. And don't worry about the styling yet. We'll finish that up as we do the styling part of it. Uh, I'm just going to add the paragraph made with Frost just for fun. And so I'm going to click update here and then we're going to open up the page and see what we've got. Okay, so this is what we've got, which is a significant departure from this link page. So uh, I'm gonna go through and just one by one, we'll go ahead and style these elements to help bring this all together. Uh, okay, so we're gonna start with the image. We noticed uh, the image is um, aligned center and we have a border radius also on the image. I'm just gonna do 100 just to make it round. So now we've got that. Uh, this is the heading. We're going to center that. I'm going down to the paragraph. We'll also center that. Uh, because I like to use uh, eight, uh, H1s for stuff like this, um, I'm going to actually change this 
to H1 uh, because I want SEO to pick up on my name. I'm gonna reduce the size of that a little bit and I'll just make this a link. Mail to automatically. Uh, okay, so now we've got the uh, social icons which we wanna also align center. Now going to the example, we see that they're all here in black. By default, the social icons block brings in the brand colors. Uh, but since we've got the block selected, we can go here to the settings and we can change the icon background to something like this. Now the buttons here we see, uh, they just uh, by default WordPress floats the buttons. And so what we wanna do is we want them to stack like this. So what we're gonna do uh, is go into the buttons block and uh, through each button, we're gonna select 100%. So if you go into in each individual button, you can change this to 100%. And below we've got the made with frost. We're gonna align this. We'll just turn this into a link really quickly. Frostwp.cups. And we wanna make this a little bit smaller just so it's not as prominent. Uh, I'm gonna click update and we can see where we're at. Okay, so we're getting there. Uh, so notice there's some spatial differences here between the two. So we wanna put these two together, the name and the paragraph. Um, so I'm just gonna go into the paragraph block. You can see lower left-hand corner, I'm inside the paragraph. And I'm gonna click on dimensions and I'm gonna click on margin. And once inside of here, I'm gonna to go to the top margin um, and I wanna zero it out, right? You can change the margin to whatever you want. What this is, uh, it just adds zero margin to the top. By default, the WordPress block gap is applied to every block in between. So kind of out of the box, every time you add a new block, uh, WordPress and in the case of Frost is set at 30 pixels. And so it adds 30 pixels in between everything. And so sometimes you need to go through and manually uh, make some updates. So I will update this here. We can see what things look like. So we're getting there. We're getting close already. Uh, now you can notice that these buttons are a little bit less wide than what we have now. Uh, if we go in here and inspect, you can see they're 600 pixels wide. And I will go through and explain why. So what I've done here is I've taken all of the uh, elements that are inside of the link page and I've added a group around it. Uh, there's a couple of reasons I did that. So what I'm gonna actually do is go here into list view, select everything, and then I'm gonna do this and do group. And what this will allow me to do right here on layout, this says use the content width and in Frost it's default 640 pixels. Uh, and so this is where you can change the width of that. So if you change that to 600 and update it, we'll see what this looks like on the front end. You'll see that this will reduce down to 600. Uh, for some reason, if you wanted to go even more narrow, you like a little sleeker look, uh, you can do something like that. I'm gonna move it back to 600 because that's what our default is. And so we'll do that. And so we're just about there. Now, as you can see on this particular uh, pattern, uh, we've got this content of the link page centered vertically, top to bottom. Uh, and so what we need to do here is inside of this, or outside of this group, we're gonna actually wrap it uh, in another group, and we're gonna turn that group into a row. There's a little bit of flex uh, box sort of reasoning behind it. We're gonna transfer this to a uh, row. We're gonna transform it to a row. So you click over here uh, to row. And um, I'm gonna go back into the example. The justification for that row is item center and the horizontal orientation. And so I'm gonna do this. And then I'm gonna do update. And what we need to do also is we will need to give uh, this row a minimum height of 100 VH, which is the viewport height. And what that does is as I update this and we go back to the example, this says take the row that wraps everything and make that at a minimum 100 pixels, or uh, excuse me, 100 uh, VH which means make sure that row spans top to bottom. And then because we have um, the justification here set to center, the row, which is actually sort of a vertical thing, uh, 
centers it top to bottom inside of the 100 picks or the 100 uh, VH that exists. And so that's how we center this uh, from top to bottom. So I'm gonna click back and forth to see uh, what we have here. Uh, there's some minor differences here. Maybe we wanna add a little bit more spacing in between the social icons and the buttons. And so I will select down here at the bottom, the entire buttons block. Uh, we can come here to settings and we just wanna to add top margin. We just wanna space that a little bit more. Maybe in this case, we wanna use the medium spacing, which is 60 pixels with frost. And we will update that. And then we can see we're now just about there. Uh, just a couple of other customization things just for uh, those who may want to play around with this. If you select the entire row, and uh, we want to make this row full width, by the way, and uh, you can see why here as I select the gray background. So if you wanted to make a background color for your link page, you can do that. Uh, you can make that any uh, color you want. And going down here to the buttons block, you can do some minor changing, but if we go into each button, we could do things like this. We can use uh, outline if we wanted to just do uh, something a little bit more minimal instead of having that heavy blue, we can do outline. Uh, switching things up again, if you go into the button, you're able to customize the color however you want. If you wanted to go to black background, you could. If you wanted to go here, you could. You can actually even go in and do a gradient button if you want as well. Uh, so that's kind of a, a neat way to customize the buttons. Uh, in this case, we'll just clear this out and we're just gonna do outline on all of them just to see how this looks. Go back to the link page and that's a pretty cool, uh, cool way to do that. So um, back up to the social icons, similarly, they also have some styles that we can apply. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select outline. I need to change the color because the, I'm going to unset the background color because the way outline works is it takes the, the text color of the icon and then uses that for the border color. So uh, for instance, if I wanted to change those to blue, a darker blue, obviously we don't want them gray, white if we had a dark background, uh, which I can also show. So if we change the row background, we can let's just say we wanted this a dark blue, then all of a sudden we would need to go through each item here uh, and I'll just go in and do this while we're doing this. We can see this is a neat way to really customize uh, your link page the way you want. And I will just go through and change all these, do a refresh, and we'll see what this looks like. Uh, we wanna go down here to the paragraph, change that to text color to white, we want, since it's a link, we need to add that capability. Similarly, we've got um, the email address, which is also a link. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and update and we can take a look and see how things are. And all of a sudden, now we've got a really cool uh, link page. So it's really that simple. Again, you can add anything you want to this. You can remove a couple of the links or the social icons if you want. Um, and again, if you, uh, one last couple of things here, if you go to the button, uh, the button has uh, support for border radius. So let's just say you wanna make them super round. You can just go into each button and apply a radius. Uh, or if you wanna square them off, you can go through and then just type in zero because by default Frost uses a five pixel button radius. And so I'll just do this and I'll update and we can just see how these look so these are the rounded buttons, which kind of goes nicely with the icons and the avatar. Uh, there's a squared version here, these next two, uh, and then you've got sort of the default five pixels there. So that's easy. And so like we said, this is a great alternative to using Linktree. Uh, this doesn't require a separate domain or using another service. You can just have your normal website, your blog, and then just creating another page called social, or sometimes I see IG, short for Instagram, people who link from Instagram to their link page. Uh, and so because it has a template that has no content whatsoever, it doesn't uh, have a header footer, acts independently, sort of on its own. And so this is just a really, really cool way to do uh, this. And one last thing, uh, I mentioned the gradient earlier, I will 
just for fun. Let's apply a gradient background to the link page. And there we go. That's a really cool look uh, for someone. And you can customize the blue too. This is just obviously Frost's um, thing. I will go through the editor. Uh, Frost also, quick side note, has uh, style variations. And so, uh, for instance, if you wanted to go with the teal look, uh, you could select teal. And then I can refresh and we'll see what this looks like. This is the teal version. Uh, if we're fans of magenta, we could do that. And by default, uh, every instance of blue, which is the primary and secondary colors inside of Frost, uh, go from the blue hex codes to the magenta hex codes and so on. So again, this is a really fun way to customize a link page for your website. You can own the page. You can do whatever you want, optimize it for SEO and all built with the Frost theme. And so there we go. Have a great rest of your day and thank you for watching this video and give it a like.